I think urban neighborhoods have a grand future right now. I think we're, we're experiencing a demographic shift that urban neighborhoods are benefiting from and will benefit from. Uh, rather than the, the era of people moving away from the city, we're kind of uh, in, a, in a reverse trend, uh, uh, at least to some extent. So we've put together here uh, six essential ingredients for success. Um, and first is the vision. Uh, then there's the stakeholder investment. You have to have people there who, who um, are invested in moving things forward. Ownership is important, both the, the less tangible form and the actual form of property ownership. Uh, you, you need a professional team. You need financing. And you need to be able to effectively communicate that vision. And then there are a few other less tangible uh, ingredients for success that are, are tied up in these six and they are um, things like belief, optimism, people, stubbornness, a willingness to be realistic which means sometimes you have to give up some ideas you have, um, and staying power. A six hour design charrette that we held during the Pleasant Street Vision Study and uh, it was very striking to us in the diversity of the people who attended it and the degree of their involvement. And uh, Mary will talk more about it. They did two types of exercises. One was where they drew ideas that they had for the neighborhood on a map of the neighborhood. The other was where they simply cut out uh, images from magazines and drew and wrote in some cases on a big collage to try to communicate the sense of the feel of the neighborhood that they were trying to achieve. The city home was done in um, the vision for it was developed in 2006 and we actually finished in 2012. Yeah, that's when the, the last unit was finished. So it certainly is a process. Um, convincing others of the vision and like Martha said we took these boards all over town um, pitching the project before the financing actually came together and then we did the development in phases and one of the things that we do have in our neighborhood that other neighborhoods don't have is um, is 3CDC and their ability to put financing together so they provided the construction loan financing and you know this was being developed in the time when the, we were going through the recession and the housing market was crashing and we were still able to sell these um, we didn't have to have pre-sales to go forward with the development and things like that so their financing really made it possible um, so then the pleasant street vision study um, the learnings that we have there are that well we the experience is that we don't own a lot of the property there we own some of the buildings that are occupied but a large of, um, amount of the property that's not occupied and the land that is vacant is controlled by another developer. So um, it makes implementation of the vision <coughs> more challenging because we don't have as much control as we did in City Home. Um, and I think one of the things that we've learned is that we, over there on Community Housing, didn't get our report finalized and out as efficiently as we needed to. So we started in 2012 and we actually didn't get it out until um, late 2013. And that's problematic because then the developer who has a lot of control of the site control, they at the same time were doing a development plan and they got their kind of plan out ahead of our vision study. So um, we think that our vision study still has a lot of value and the whole time we had said we wanted to influence development. Even though we may not be the developer, we wanted to try to have some influence. The community speaking about what they would like to see in their neighborhood, the stakeholders speaking about what they want to see. Um, and we would have liked to eventually got this adopted by the city of Cincinnati, and therefore I think it could have had more influence going forward. But since this other plan came out ahead of ours, um, it, it's, it's not as clear now. It's a little bit of conflict between our vision and this plan that has been created by uh, the developer that owns the property. So, in 2012, <coughs> as probably everybody knows, we did this um, quality of life planning work where we engaged hundreds of residents in the neighborhood to envision the future of the neighborhood. And we broke out 
into several different um, groups, one of which was health and wellness. One of the goals of the health and wellness team was to expand services at the Madisonville Wellness Center and to build a new facility. The current facility in the Strip Center is very outdated, very small, and currently occupies about 5,000 square feet. Um, the community felt like this was an asset to the neighborhood and they wanted to keep it in the neighborhood, but they also wanted to improve it. At the same time, the city um, has told us that they also want to improve the So Martha department. and GBBN worked, on, worked with the health department on answering that question of how much space do you need? And so they were able to identify how many um, exam rooms, how big the pharmacy should be, um, what else was in there? The wellness center, the education room. Dental. Dental, right, the dental clinic. I forgot about that. Yeah, we don't have a dental clinic, and that's something that um, that the community really wanted to have in as well. So, so it's about a 12,000 square foot um, plan at this point, you know, doubling what they have now. And then from the community's perspective, uh, we wanted to know how does this fit in with our overall development strategy. You know, right now they're in a strip mall. Other health centers are standalone facilities. We have a new form-based code. <laughs> we don't necessarily want a standalone facility. We definitely don't want a strip mall. So how can they be part of this, you know, greater vision for the neighborhood? So um, the second part of the feasibility study was to figure out how the health department can be part of a mixed-use plan. And we were so thrilled that um, Dr. Maseru and all of the leadership of the health department felt that they could be part of a mixed-use development where they would occupy um, the first floor, um, probably along this side um, of Ravenna Street, um, and kind of wrapping around a little bit onto Madison Road. But we knew that um, you know the highest and best use for Madison and West Bowl was not uh, a health center, which is closed on the weekends and in the evenings. But we really wanted them to be uh, part of the central redevelopment because one, we wanted neighbors and other people to be able to access this facility, um, and we wanted it to be you know accessible by a bus line. 